JC here. Today we're going to cover a debate that's probably more hotly contested than who's the better state of origin team, Queensland or New South Wales. It's what's the better fridge, compressor or three-way? And depending which side of the fence you sit on, they're pretty aggressive in their attitude towards it. However, they've both got pros and cons, and a lot of it comes down to what kind of traveling you're going to be doing. So without being biased one way or another, I just thought I'd cover a few of, a few of the features and benefits of both. For starters, we've got the 12 volt compressor, which is very popular. It does have a higher ambient range, and it is a bit more efficient than the three-way fridge. They cool down a lot quicker. There is no doubt about it. However, if you're going to be using this, you do need to make sure that you've got an adequate management system to run it and you are partially going to be weather aligned. If you get several bad days in a row that means you'll have to run a generator or find a power source because on average they do draw several amps an hour and especially over winter when you don't have charge for a long period of time that's a constant draw on your battery system. So yes they're an amazing fridge that cools down really quick, really well, and doesn't require you to have the van level, but it's important that you do spend the money to have the correct battery set up and solar set up to be able to operate efficiently if you want to stay away off grid for extended periods of time. On the other side of the fence, we have the three-way fridge. Now, three-way fridges have got a pretty bad reputation, more from what was happening 15, 20 years ago, when they weren't available as a tropical climate class. So they did really struggle in Australia. However, since then, they've made some massive improvements that's have really narrowed the gap between the two. For seconds, because an evaporative fridge or an absorption fridge, they do require adequate airflow. So the fridge vents used at the back of them now are twice the size of what they used to be. They also insulate either side. Now, years gone by, the top vent was actually too low, so now they raise it above the top of the fridge. So it allows the airflow to push through and escape, which increases the efficiency of the three-way fridge. The benefit of the three-way fridge is obviously you don't need thousands of dollars worth of solar and battery management system to be able to operate. You're not weather aligned. One nine kilo gas bottle will pretty much run a three-way fridge round the clock for two weeks. So regardless of the weather, you're still gonna be able to operate adequately. Some of the new three-way fridges have even got built-in fans behind them, which are thermostatically controlled. So when it gets to a certain temperature behind it, they'll activate and help push the hot air out from behind, increasing the efficiency again. Now, they don't make any noise unlike the compressor fridges, so you're not going to have that compressor kicking in and out throughout the night. Some of the big differences between the two that are probably talking points for when you're selecting your fridge for your travels is what kind of solar setup you're going to be running because if you don't want to be running thousands of dollars worth of batteries and solar then a three-way may be more efficient than you. They don't make a noise which is a big positive. However, they do take longer to cool down. So yeah, they take several hours on gas and a little bit longer on 240 volt. Now the 12 volt side of them will only maintain the temperature while you're traveling. So you, you wouldn't run it off your batteries or anything like that. However, the compressor fridge will cool down a lot quicker and you'll be basically like your fridge at home, you'll be running in an hour or two, but as stated earlier, you must have the management system to run it, and alternatively, you are gonna be slightly weather reliant unless you're gonna carry a generator around with you when you're off grid. So as far as who wins, it's really up to you what kind of traveling you're gonna be doing, what kind of setup you're gonna to put together, but they're both massively improved from what they were two decades ago, and are both very efficient in their own right. Thanks very much, guys. I'll leave you guys to sort out the argument.